You've probably seen it in your kitchen cabinet or at the back of an old recipe book. The Three Gorges Dam is so massive that it actually slowed Earth's rotation by a fraction of a second. But what really holds back the Yangtze River? Over 28 million cubic meters of concrete. And no, concrete isn't just cement. Let's uncover step-by-step step how this complex mixture was engineered to build one of the greatest megastructures in history. Cement and concrete are not the same thing. Cement is just one part of concrete, like flour is in a cake. On its own, it is a fine gray powder, but when mixed with water, sand, and gravel, it becomes concrete. At the Three Gorges Dam site, the first step was making cement. They used Portland cement, which is made by heating a mix of limestone, clay, and sand in large rotating kilns. These kilns reach over 2,550 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat turns the mixture into small, hard lumps called clinker. After cooling, the clinker is ground into powder. That powder is cement. But cement alone cannot build a dam. The concrete used for this project needed to be strong, resist heat, and last for many years. The real challenge was turning that cement into high-quality concrete on a huge scale. That is where the other ingredients played their part. To make strong and reliable concrete, engineers used four main ingredients. These were cement, water, crushed stone, or sand known as aggregates, and special additives. Each ingredient had a specific purpose. Cement acted as a binder. Water helped the cement react and harden. Aggregates give the concrete volume and strength. Additives improved flow, slowed down or sped up the setting, and helped control heat. There was no single mix that worked for every part of the dam. Some areas needed concrete that could flow into tight spaces. Others needed mixes that could handle high heat or heavy pressure. To find the right balance, engineers ran tens of thousands of tests. In many parts of the dam, they used roller compacted concrete. This is a drier mix that is spread in layers and pressed down with heavy machines. It is faster to place, more affordable, and still very strong. They also used less cement to reduce heat during curing and avoid cracks. When cement mixes with water, it begins a chemical reaction called hydration. This reaction is what gives concrete its strength, but it also releases heat. In small projects, this heat is not a big problem. In a massive structure like the Three Gorges Dam, it became a serious concern. If the concrete got too hot while it was hardening, it could crack from the inside and weaken the structure. To control the temperature, engineers designed a cooling system. They placed pipes inside the concrete to carry chilled water and reduce heat. The ingredients were also cooled before mixing. Crushed stone and sand were sprayed with cold water, and the mixing water was kept in chilled tanks. Concrete was poured in smaller sections to better manage the heat as it spread. This careful control of temperature helped prevent damage during curing. In a way, the concrete used in the dam had its own cooling system to keep it safe and stable. The materials needed to build the Three Gorges Dam were massive in scale. Over 100 million tons of stone and sand were used, along with more than 16 million tons of cement and billions of liters of water. These materials had to be delivered continuously to keep the construction going. Most of the stone and sand, known as aggregates, came from nearby quarries to save time and reduce transport needs. To meet the huge demand, engineers built concrete batching plants directly on site. These plants worked like small factories, measuring, mixing, and producing fresh concrete every day. Timing was very important. Each batch had to be mixed properly, tested for quality, and delivered quickly. If it was not used in time, it could start to harden and become unusable. In a project this large, even a short delay could waste materials and slow down progress. Everything had to move with precision and speed. Placing concrete at the Three Gorges Dam was done in layers called lifts, each about 1.5 to 2 meters thick. Each layer had to be spread evenly, compacted with rollers or vibrators, and cooled using pipes placed inside the concrete. After one layer was set, the next was added on top. This method made the dam stronger and more stable. To move concrete across the large site, engineers used cableways that worked like moving platforms in the air. These carried large buckets of concrete to the exact location needed. Each bucket could carry up to 15 tons of concrete at a time. Cracking was still a major concern, even with all the cooling systems and layer-by-layer -layer construction. To reduce this risk, engineers used chemical retarders that slowed the curing process and gave the concrete more time to set evenly. They also added expansive agents that helped fill tiny cracks as the concrete hardened. 
After each pour, the surface was kept moist for weeks using water sprays and thermal blankets to help the concrete gain full strength. In the lower parts of the dam, where pressure was highest, steel bars were added to reinforce the structure. In some areas, concrete had to be poured non-stop for more than 20 days. Stopping halfway could have caused cold joints, which are weak layers that do not bond well. To avoid this, workers operated in rotating shifts. Equipment was maintained while running, and trucks delivered materials around the clock. Everything was done to keep the pour moving without interruption. What do you think would happen if a concrete pour stopped in the middle of a structure this size? Let us know in the comments. We will answer it at the end of the video. Every batch of concrete used in the Three Gorges Dam had to pass strict checks. On-site lab teams regularly tested samples for strength, moisture, temperature, and flow to make sure the concrete was safe and reliable. Engineers also placed sensors inside the dam to track temperature and pressure in real time as the concrete cured. If anything looked off, workers could adjust the next batch or fix the issue before it became a problem. This constant monitoring helped maintain quality from start to finish. By the end of construction, more than 200,000 tests had been done to ensure the structure would last for decades. The scale of the dam itself is just as impressive. It used 28 million cubic meters of concrete, enough to build 15 Hoover dams. That much concrete could cover 250 soccer fields or fill enough trucks to circle the earth. Despite its size and strength, the dam is not completely stiff. It was designed to bend slightly under pressure from water, earthquakes, and temperature changes. This ability to flex helps protect the structure and makes it one of the most advanced concrete projects ever built. Concrete might seem like a modern invention, but people have used it for thousands of years. The ancient Romans made their own version using volcanic ash, lime, and seawater. Some of the harbor walls they built are still standing today. Modern concrete, however, uses carefully tested formulas and chemical additives to make it stronger and more reliable. This advanced form of concrete became widely used in the 20th century. The Three Gorges Dam took it even further, using concrete as the core of a structure strong enough to hold back billions of tons of water. It is more than just concrete, it is engineered strength. From powdered cement to cooling systems and non-stop pours, every part of the Three Gorges Dam depended on mastering both the science and the technique of concrete. Today, this massive structure produces over 90 terawatt hours of electricity each year. It also helps control flooding, supports shipping routes, and stands as a powerful example of human engineering. Now for the question that we asked earlier, what happens if you stop a concrete pour halfway? It creates cold joints, which are weak spots where fresh concrete does not fully bond with the older layer. These areas can crack or leak over time, which is why continuous pouring is so important in large-scale construction. Over 4.5 million barrels of cement, a raging river, and a race against time. The Hoover Dam was more than concrete and steel, it was a test of human will and raw material strength. Step 1. Quarrying the ingredients, limestone and clay. To build something as monumental as the Hoover Dam, the first step was gathering the right raw materials. Cement, specifically Portland cement, starts with two critical ingredients, limestone and clay. For this project, engineers relied heavily on the Arizona Portland Cement Company's quarry, located in Clarkdale, Arizona, about 300 miles away from the dam site. This was no small task. Crews worked around the clock, drilling and blasting through rugged terrain to extract millions of tons of limestone and shale. Once the rock was broken down, it was crushed on site into smaller pieces suitable for transport. Each train car was loaded with approximately 70 tons of crushed stone, and trains often carried up to 35 carloads per day to keep up with demand. Over the entire project, more than 1.5 million tons of raw material were moved. But it wasn't just about volume, it was about precision. Every shipment of crushed rock underwent rigorous testing in on-site labs to ensure the chemical makeup was exactly right. Calcium carbonate, silica, alumina, and iron oxide all had to be in perfect balance. Even a slight deviation could compromise the entire structure. Step 2. The Kilns, Turning Rock into Clinker Once the raw materials arrived at the cement plant, the real transformation began. The crushed limestone and clay were first ground down to a fine powder, 
but turning that powder into cement required firepower. The mixture was fed into enormous rotary kilns, which were long, cylindrical steel tubes stretching up to 400 feet in length and 15 feet in diameter. As the kilns rotated slowly, the material inside was heated to around 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit, or roughly 1,480 degrees Celsius. At these blistering temperatures, a remarkable chemical reaction occurred, fusing the raw materials into marble-sized pellets known as clinker. These clinkers were the building blocks of true Portland cement. At full capacity, the kilns produced more than 2,500 barrels of cement per day, an astonishing output that kept the project on schedule. After cooling, the clinker was sent through grinding mills where it was crushed once more and combined with a small amount of gypsum, around 5% by weight. This final touch was crucial because it controlled how quickly the cement would set when mixed with water. What came out of the process was the fine gray powder we recognize as cement, ready to be used in one of the biggest construction projects the world had ever seen. Here's a question for you. Do you know how long it would have taken for the dam's concrete to cool naturally if they hadn't used a special cooling system? Tell your guesses in comments. We'll reveal the answer at the end. And if you love epic engineering stories, hit that subscribe button now. Step 3. How Cement Got to the Dam Producing cement was only half the battle. Getting it from the plant to the dam was a whole different challenge, and engineers had to think creatively to overcome it. Trucks and trains could only do so much, especially given the remote and rugged location of the Hoover Dam site. To solve the problem, the team built a custom aerial cableway system that was nothing short of revolutionary. Massive steel buckets carried barrels of cement, each weighing about 376 pounds across the deep Colorado River Canyon to the heart of the dam site. These buckets moved along high wires that spanned the canyon, delivering cement with incredible speed and precision. At the peak of construction, 16 cableways operated around the clock, keeping the flow of cement constant and efficient. The pace was relentless. Workers were able to pour up to 8,000 cubic yards of concrete in just 24 hours. A record-breaking rate at the time, timing was everything. Once cement is mixed with water, the chemical reaction begins immediately, so there is no room for delay. This aerial cableway system kept everything moving seamlessly, allowing the dam to rise higher and faster than anyone had thought possible. Step 4. Beating the heat One of the most mind-blowing challenges the engineers faced was managing the heat generated by the curing concrete. Here's the thing. Concrete generates a significant amount of heat as it hardens a process called the heat of hydration. If the Hoover Dam had been poured as a single solid block, it would have taken an estimated 125 years to cool naturally. Not only that, but the intense heat buildup would have caused the concrete to crack and fail long before it ever became operational. To tackle this, engineers devised a brilliant plan. Instead of pouring the dam in one giant piece, they divided it into a series of interlocking concrete blocks, each about 50 feet square and five feet high. But even that wasn't enough to manage the heat. They also embedded over 582 miles of 1-inch steel cooling pipes within the concrete. After each block was poured, chilled river water, kept at around 45 degrees Fahrenheit, was pumped through the pipes. This pulled excess heat from the concrete, allowing it to cool and cure evenly in just weeks rather than decades. The cooling system was a groundbreaking innovation, one of the first of its kind on such a massive scale. Thanks to this clever engineering, the Hoover Dam's concrete remains crack-free and rock-solid nearly 90 years later. Step 5. The perfect recipe for concrete mix. So, what exactly made this concrete so legendary? The recipe was deceptively simple but precisely calculated. The mix contained roughly 40% sand, 50% gravel, crushed rock, and 10% Portland cement powder. But the real secret lay in the size of the aggregate. Engineers used extra-large stones, some measuring up to 9 inches across, to reduce the amount of cement needed per cubic yard. This not only kept the mix strong, but also helped minimize the heat produced during curing. By the end of construction, the Hoover Dam had consumed a staggering 4.36 million cubic yards of concrete, more than 5 million barrels of cement, and approximately 10 million tons of total material. 
To put it into perspective, the amount of concrete used could have paved a four-foot-wide sidewalk circling the entire Earth, an astonishing symbol of the project's sheer scale. But even more remarkable than the volume is the dam's durability. Nearly a century later, thanks to its meticulously engineered mix and groundbreaking cooling system, the Hoover Dam stands as one of the toughest and most enduring feats of construction in human history. Cement has ancient roots dating back to the Romans, who mixed volcanic ash and lime to build enduring marvels like the Pantheon. But modern Portland cement, the type used for the Hoover Dam, was invented in 1824 by Joseph Aspton in England. By the early 20th century, it had become essential to global infrastructure, with U.S. companies like Lehigh Portland Cement and Atlas Cement dominating the market. When the Hoover Dam was greenlit by the Boulder Canyon Project Act of 1928, it posed an unprecedented challenge, producing and delivering over 4.5 million barrels of cement, enough to build a two-lane highway from New York to San Francisco. The Arizona Portland Cement Company became a key supplier, and new rail lines and storage silos were built to keep up with the relentless pace of construction. Today, global cement giants like Lafarge Holcim and Cemex continue to build on these foundations, pushing the limits of what's possible in modern construction. So, remember that trivia question from earlier? Do you know how long it would have taken for the dam's concrete to cool naturally if they hadn't used a special cooling system? The answer is, if the Hoover Dam's concrete hadn't been cooled with its ingenious pipe system, it would have taken a jaw-dropping 125 years to cool naturally. That's the power of smart engineering. Next time you see the Hoover Dam, know you're looking at a masterclass in material science, precision planning, and pure human determination. The cement that built the Hoover Dam wasn't just mixed, it was engineered to perfection. If you found this story as mind-blowing as we did, Click that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss another epic deep dive into the world's greatest engineering marvels. Thanks for watching!